Hey guys, Dark Wasak on FPV, and as you can see, I don't know what order these videos are going to be coming out, so if you haven't seen it already, we did move some of the stuff back here to the house so that on the days when I have my kids, uh, I'm here instead of at the shop. Uh, and so I'm going to be working from home on these days, and it's still kind of messy back there because we're still bringing equipment back here so we can have a shop here and a shop at our new facility, our new nine acre, or eight and a half acre facility, just cleaning up a DJI. Uh, Anyway, so today's going to be a pretty cool day. Uh, we're going to be building our DB Laser 5, our custom build here. I've got a customer that ordered it. We're going to get started with that. So I'm just going to jump right into it for you guys that uh, may want to watch this. This is actually a kit that you can buy as well. Um, and let me see if I can straighten out our camera here. Uh, that's better, I think. All right. And then we'll zoom in just a tad. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Bear with me a second. And then I can show you the screen. All right. There we go. Uh... Let me see. No, let's try that. Okay, I think we're good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this over now. Boom, there we go. So we're gonna start by opening, uh, we're gonna open the frame first. Let's go ahead and do that. Now I've got a whole video assembly on this anyway, so this one we're just gonna do from beginning to end here. I wanna thank my customer for being patient with me. We've had some situations come up in the last week or so that have really pushed, back, pushed us back a little bit. And we're going to do a whole video on what's been going on, especially with regard to lipos and safety, because we've seen a couple fires lately, and these these are avoidable. They they are preventable. They're just it's just up to the it's up to the uh, you know the person uh, using the equipment to make sure that they follow the procedures properly. So we're going to go over that again. Let me go ahead and get started on this frame though. So we're going to take this apart. They've given us all the screws here. Here the arms. A very simple frame. Uh, very strong frame. This is one of the frames that we ran a huge sale on. Uh, so let's just get started with this here. Um, all right. So just so that we're clear, let me pull these apart. There we go. So you've got your bottom piece here, and your your uh, flight controller or your ESC will sit on on top of here. This is your top plate right here. All right. So I'm just going to move some of my equipment around here. Narrow part is the front. Wider part is the back. And if we hear my phone go off, I apologize. It's a little crazy this morning. I was out of town this weekend, came back to a whole bunch of phone calls and other things. All right, now as far as the arms go, um, we're gonna mount the arms like this. And so let's go ahead and open up our bag of goodies here, see what they've given us. We'll separate our screw packs into sections here. Put section one on this side, there we go. one here, put these right here, okay, and then we'll put our standoff. So what you can see, what you should be able to see from this is that we have three sets of screw lengths, uh, I believe it's going to be uh, 12, uh, no, maybe, maybe 14, I guess, whatever these ones are here, this millimeter, I've got my ruler, I just set it down somewhere. Uh, but I don't know why. Anyways, so did I put it back? No, of course not. Anyway, so uh, these are about six mil. These are about eight mil. And then these ones are going to be, I think, they're going to be like 14, maybe 14 or 16 mil. I don't know. Uh, but this is how that's going to work. So what we're going to do is, the way these work is, remember, narrow part is up front. And so what we're going to do is, we're going to put these with the, three, with the two screw holes facing forward, and the other two will be facing the other direction. And what will happen is your standoffs will actually go on the front part here. So you're going to take uh, your screws like this, and you're going to run the longer screw through the front, just like that. And this is where your standoff would go, okay? So you put that one in there, kind of hold that in place, all right? And then you take your next one, and you put it here. And then you can see the arms are cut in this angle to where they meet together perfectly like this. The next one here... There we go. And we'll just finger tighten this one as well. All right, there you go, perfect. Now, these screws right here, these, I, think, I believe these are gonna be eight mil. These are gonna go down and bolt into the uh, countersunk uh, nuts right here. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, and let's do the next one. Once those are good, you can go ahead and tighten them. All right. And we're going to do the same on the back. So the back ones are going to put two screws going out, two motor mount screws going out. 
All right, you can put the smaller screws here if you wish, just like that. Uh, let me check something here just to see how we want this to be done. Yep. Okay. Because your standoffs are going to be more inside this time. All right. Just one like that. There you go. Okay. And then what we'll do is come up from the bottom here. There you go. Put the standoff here. All right. Now, the rest of these won't be used until we put the top plate on. So we're going to save those. We'll put them in this little holder right there. Put our exacto knife aside. And now let's see what hardware we're working with. So we are using the, uh, it's, this is going to be an HGLRC F4V5 Pro. All right. So that's the flight controller we're going to be using. And we are going to be using... Looks like an R Charlins or Racer Star 35 amp, 4 in 1. Let's do that as well. All right. So, what we're going to do is actually, I'm going to put this aside. We're going to start with the uh, ESC first. Now, if you look at the way this can sit, it can sit right on those rubber pieces right there. So, there's really no standoffs that we need to use. All right. So, just make sure that you line your motors up and you set this the way it needs to be so that your motors, I mean, make it easier for yourself so that your motors are in line. So motor four is up here. Uh, motor, what do they have this? Motor one and three. So they have this basically like it needs to go, uh, it would be basically like this. With the, with the uh, XT60 coming out the right side uh, of the quad, okay? So if we wanna go like that, then this is how this board would sit. So let's go ahead and plan to keep the board like that. Uh, and we need to solder on our XT60 and we need to put in the screws for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my M3 screws. I'm gonna see how, I know HCLRC usually gives us hardware as well, and they did. So they've given us our nylon uh, standoffs and so forth. So let's just go ahead and see how big of a screw we need for this, okay? So I'm gonna use a 10 to start. 10 will be too small. Let's go to a, uh, let's go to 14 and see how much room I can get with this 14. And 14 is going to be too tall. So what we need is a 12, I think, unless I don't use their uh, standoff. So let me just check and see if I want to go that route. Time for me to kind of see which one I prefer here. So let, let me just see where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Check the ten again. Actually, the 10's not too bad at all. It'll allow me to use the existing hardware, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the 10 for now. All right, so let me do that one. And I'll come in and do this one. Okay.
mm, you know what, I'm gonna change that. After looking at the way that plug is, I'm not, I don't like it. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an additional spacer just to give it a little bit more room. Also, especially if we want to go ahead and fly with a bottom mount battery. So 10's gonna be out. Uh, let's see, I may check the 14 again because I wanna add a spacer there and I may just add a two mil spacer, so let me just see. So if we have 14, if we put 14's in, then I've got plenty of room, but I need to add, uh, what I may do, you see, is I'm gonna add, what I may do is add a one mil spacer or a, or a uh, fastener. I don't know, let me see how the spacer fits first. Okay, so that's good, but I don't like the spacer. The spacer's too wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab an O-ring instead. I'm gonna use the O-ring, and I have those right here. So bear with me one second. There's my O-rings. I'm gonna use these instead. Now these are M2 O-rings, but they'll be just fine for an M3 as well. They just spread around perfectly. So I'm not worried about that. But they're narrow enough that they don't touch any of the components. Or they don't touch any of the chips on the ESC. And that's my big thing is the other one was, it's a little too much and it's kind of touching the other side there where I didn't want it to. All right, now let's check it out. Now, I know I've turned this around a little bit. I'm debating which way I like this here. So. Downside to putting the board like this, if you look at it, is the fact that the ESC wires are going to be a little exposed. Um, but I'm not sure it's going to be too much of a problem because of the fact, I'm going to put these on here. This is a great way to hold the board in place, by the way. I mean, it's a very cheap uh, way to do it. It's very, these are very inexpensive. These O-rings, so let me just... Get that down there. Now the board's going to stay in place. I don't have to worry about it falling off. All right. So now let's see how this looks. Now we can put these on as well, and that'll hold it. That'll give us plenty of room. Also protect the board nicely. And we've got uh, room for the uh, strap if somebody wants to do a bottom mount lipo. Okay. And I'm thinking I may add another ring. I'm not sure yet, but let me see. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I may add one more to the bottom here. Let me do that real quickly. Only because once I tighten this down, it's going to be really close. So let me put two of these. And that'll make me feel a little bit better that this board is more protected. Um, I, While looking at this, I am deciding that I am going to turn the board. I'm not going to leave it like that. I do not... Uh, I just am not feeling too comfortable with the uh, ESC wires facing out. So let me put it like this and then just do a resource mapping. All right. Um, so let me see about that. At the same time, I'm just going to go ahead and put these on now. Yeah, that'll work perfect. Okay. So as far as the plug goes, because I'm going to be kind of out of room here already, um, we have the wire diagram for this one, and I believe what we have is, it goes like, oops, sorry, it will go like, should be identical no matter how you do it, actually. There we go, just like that, okay? So we'll put that on because getting to that plug is going to be very hard once this is in place. Uh, I will most likely remove these so I can solder the XT60. But I'll leave the screws there. Hopefully they'll stay. As a matter of fact, I may just put an O-ring on each screw so it doesn't fall out. Let me do that. I'm telling you, these are great little helpers. If you don't want to have something on the screws but you get tired of them falling out, these suckers are awesome. All right, so this is basically what we have to start. So let's go ahead and fire up 
our soldering iron. Okay. Go ahead and put all this. Oh, and that's my wife, so hold on one second. Hey babe, I'm doing a live feed. Oh. Need me to stop it? No, it's not that important. I just wanted to show you. We have little berries. Berries? Are they poisonous? Uh, I think they're like little raspberries. I'm not I don't think you should eat them. Yeah, I'm not going to. I just wanted to show you. Okay, love you. Love you, bye. Bye. That's my wife. She's awesome. Now, I'm just going to put these screws away real quick, so bear with me a second. I don't want any mess on my desk here. Okay. All right. So, with that said, we've got our soldering iron on. Should be ready to go. Uh, I'm going to get the USB cables all lined up. All right, get our flux pen out. Uh-oh, running out. Let's get ready to set this up. So we're going to tint, oh, well, you know what? Yeah, it really isn't gonna matter which direction this goes. I did have it the other way, but going like this wouldn't be too bad either. Uh, no matter what, we're resource mapping. So if we put it this way, one and three are flipped, and uh well they'll all be flips i'm just going to keep it like this i don't mind with that cable up because i believe now i'll check real quickly so let me just see uh this board is this way now if it's going to interfere then i will have to turn it and it might just interfere yep never mind scratch that idea we'll turn it upside down and we'll turn the other side Okay, here we go. Perfect. All right, so let's get this ready. Get our solder. Let's start tinting the ESC. Okay, there we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tin the pads here. Tin our, tin our ground pad. Okay. Tin the positive pad. All right, all right, and we're gonna let that sit a bit because we have to set up our XT60 and we don't have a cable for that yet, so we need to make it. So this is what they've given us here and then HDLRC gives us another plug as well. And to be honest with you, if I compare the two, I prefer this plug over the one HDLRC sends. Okay, so let me go ahead and get my little, uh, where's my little holder there? Oh, I may not use it, I guess, but if I have it, I'd like to use it. Yeah, let me just, uh, <laughs> Mm -mm. No, I guess I don't know where it is. All right, well, we'll use our setup here. <laughs> where did my XT30, XT60 holder go? Hold on. All right. 
well, I'll use this one then. We can make do with something else. Make this makeshift version of it, all right? I like using the holder, even though I got used to using rubber bands and stuff. We'll use this one. Assuming this will hold, I'm not sure it will, but I can make do of it this way, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll hold it like that. Why not? Okay, so we'll hold this in place. All right, so remember guys, the square is the positive side, the angle here is the ground. We'll start with the ground, so let's go ahead and tin that up. All right. Get our soldering iron ready. We'll drop a little bit of solder on here. Fill up that, uh, fill up that opening just a little bit. There we go. Then we're going to hold the soldering iron here. Watch the solder melt, and then this should slide right in there. There we go. Okay. We'll cut the excess away once it's cooled off. Now we're going to do the same on the positive side. Let's tin it up. Add the solder into the little opening there. All right. There you go. Perfect. All right, so we got them both done. Let's loosen it up. And then what we'll do is we'll come in and cut the excess solder that kind of pushed out of it there. Then we'll put the heat shrink on it and that will be a secure connection. There's one cut. We want to be able to remove all this here. All right, there we go. Now let's get our heat shrink. Black and red. I can find a narrower tube. Well, I guess not. We'll use this one, that's fine. What we'll do is we'll cut about half. Put those here, start with the red, bring that down, make sure it covers the entire area, okay? Then we'll put the black on there, bring that down as well, make sure it covers the entire area. And then, get started with the heat. And the heat's not too strong actually. It's not really it's not really that hot there. It's about 200 degrees Celsius. So I've got my finger on there and it, it burns a little bit, but it's not like overwhelming by any means. Alright, that'll take care of that. Turn that off. Alright, so there's our XT60. Okay, ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the drone back now. And one thing I want to do with this XT60 first is I'm going to go ahead and add some of my solder to the tinned ends already because my solder will melt faster than what the factory puts on here. And I want it to melt fast into this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and kind of put a bunch of our solder around it, which should heat up the factory tin and then kind of absorb into it like it's doing right there. Do the same on the positive side. This way I'm not having to sit here forever trying to get this wire to melt into my solder. I will most likely come back and put another layer of solder on there uh, once it gets on there, but I'm just going to try to tack it down first. So we've got our ground on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and work on putting that on. 
and I'm just going to kind of spread the solder out so I can get it to just hold. I just want it to hold. This isn't a final by any means. I'm just trying to get it to hold. And then what I'll do is I'll come in with some more solder. Once it's held, let me do the positive a little bit more on this positive here. All right, now, if it comes off while you're adding more solder, that's fine. It's kind of expected that it, that may happen. What you want to do is basically trying to spread this and make it a nice, a nice uh, connection between both sides of the pad. All right, so you're going to spread it over. Come back on this side and do the same. And then what will happen is once you get ready to melt it all down, it will all just kind of blend in together nice and smooth. But you got to get enough solder on there to begin with just to make sure you've got a solid connection. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, it's not hot, I mean, I'm just going to hold this down. I'm going to have this melt all the solder around it, and this thing's going to sit beautifully. Okay. Still have to come in and put the capacitor on, so don't forget about that. Now we're going to do the positive side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold it down. There. That's what I want to see. In the ground. Do it again. Perfect. Okay, so these two pads are on really well. The wires are touching the pad, which is the main thing. You don't want it to just be touching the solder, they are not touching each other. And that gives me room to add the, uh, well, yeah, these are on very solid. Gives me room to add the capacitor, okay? So with that said, uh, we're gonna put this on here so we can hold this down. We're gonna get ready to add the capacitor and then the ESC for the most part will be done except for the, that's the capacitor they give us for this small, um, uh, for this uh, flight controller. We're gonna use what they've given us then we're gonna put it just like this, okay? So we're gonna flux the capacitor. And I know this capacitor would be just fine for this build. I mean, we could add a bigger one, but honestly, this is not a, this isn't an overpowered quad by any means. This is a good smooth flying quad. Uh, and uh, this capacitor will be just fine. So we're gonna come over here to the voided side on the ground, and we're just gonna let that melt in nicely. I'm gonna come over here we're going to melt this into the positive nicely. And then what we'll do on the positive side is adjust a little bit more to cover both sides. Just like that. Perfect. Let's check the ground here. Perfect. Yep. That came out nice and it's holding everything. It's solid. Very solid. All right. Now that that's done, we can get to the motors portion. Go ahead and get our solder out of the way. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna tighten down the flight or the ESC. Okay, to kind of get in the position of where it's gonna be. Just like this. And you're gonna figure tighten these, so don't over tighten them, okay? Because those rubber O-rings are pushing back, so it's acting kind of like a, a locking washer there, so you should be just fine. So don't worry about over tightening it, it's not gonna go anywhere. There you go, all right? All right, now what we've got to do is let's go ahead and start getting the motors out. So we're going to grab the motors. We're running Brother Hobbies, and this is going to be the returners. All right, so we are running, uh, let me see, he got the 2306 2650 uh, KV, and uh, let me see, yeah, the R5 Deadpool, so here we go. So we know that the length of the wire, all right, and we're going to determine that here in just a second. Let's pull the hardware here real quickly and be careful when you do this hardware because one thing is is that these rubber o-rings must stay on the motor since the motor has no textured area here this is what stops the propeller the propeller from kind of spinning loose 
So put that on there and then put the lock nut on there and just don't lose it. Now, as far as the screw length, let's see if that's gonna be the, that'll be perfect. So we're gonna use their screws. We're gonna use the Brother Hobby screws. All right, and we're just gonna kind of get these set in. And I need to go get my other uh, hex driver, so please hold on a second because I left it on the table behind me as I'm building that new 3D printer. All right, let me go grab that real quick. I think I did. Maybe I put it in here. Hold on, maybe this is this in it. Yeah, never mind. I got it. No need to go anywhere. All right, so we're going to put one motor screw, put the other one here. Remember, guys, don't tighten these down too tight, okay? Just, just, just enough there to hold it in place. And I'm only going to use, I guess I'll put three in. I don't mind. We'll use all three. Fine. Okay, there we go. Now, let's look at motor length and how we're going to run these wires, okay? So, or motor wire length, I mean. So, we're going to have uh, our standoffs here. I know that that rubber O-ring's on there. Ignore that for right now. I'm just trying to get an idea of where we want to run these wires. So, we could come in like this, or we can go around. I'm going to come inside like that, and then I'm going to turn it over, or I can turn it however you want. Um, so we're going to take the closest wire here and we're going to bring it to about right here. We'll take the next wire, the middle wire, right? And we'll bring it to right here. And we'll try to run these as nice and flat as possible. And we'll take the last wire. Okay. And we will bring it. So we got one, two, and then three, okay? Just like that. All right, and we'll run these underneath, and that way we'll put the flight controller on. These are gonna stay pretty hidden. So let's go ahead and work with that. And what we're gonna do right here is we're just gonna lay these over and then cut them, all right? So we're gonna cut one here, one here, and one here, okay? And they should come out a little bit different in length, although not like that. Let me see what I got here. One, two, uh, this one. Let me put this one, let me redo this one. I think I mismarked it. Yeah, so I had it pushed a little bit too far in. So let me line that around. And what we'll do is we'll just do it like this. So we're gonna take this one, and we're gonna cut it probably right about there okay should stagger just a little bit all right cool now i'm going to take these actually i'm going to save these because we may need them later so let's go ahead and strip these real quick and get to soldering them so we can show you what it's going to look like so take about one to two mil of of the wire off of the sheath off okay and then i'm going to put it here and I'm going to add my flux to it, my flux pen to get these to really absorb the solder. I'm going to twist them up just like that. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and tin them. One, two, three. A little bit more there. All right. Now with them tinned, I'm going to do this this way this time. I'm going to actually solder them first, and then I'll fasten them uh, down to the arm because I want to just make sure that my measurements are right. So we're going to do one to here. Okay. We'll do the other one here, and then we'll do the last one Let me get rid of the last. Let me make sure I don't put too much solder on there. Okay, there we go. Should come out looking pretty clean. And what we want to do here is I'm going to bring it over. Just like that. Okay, and run the wires to where they sit right under, just like 
this, okay? That is our step one right there. Okay, now we can take our motor tape, take the thin strips, I guess. There we go. Let's see who's writing me, by the way. Things are going crazy on these. There we go. Oh, everybody playing Wordle. Man, that thing, we are having fun with that. All right, so we go. We're gonna start with our first piece of tape here. We're gonna start under. So line it up with where the, where the uh, factory heat shrink ends on the motor. Come around. You wanna get some good wraps of that. Okay, a couple times around, just like this. There you go. And we'll do it again up here. Right before the arm meets the frame. Uh, I'm sorry, before the bottom part of the arm comes. So let's do I'll show you what I'm talking about. So. So right here. Let's start the tape again. Come around, keep those wires straight and in line, just like that. And then just keep overlapping it a couple times. Hold that in place nice and secure. And there you go. Okay, so you've got that part done. Now let's do the other motor. See, and the idea is, once you put this on, See, that enough clearance to keep the motor wires hidden, okay? And keep everything looking clean and perfect, just like that. It's gonna be nice. When this is finished, it's gonna sit nice and smooth. All right, so let's take that back off real quick because we don't need it just now. Uh, come on, there you go. All right. Okay. All right, let's get the other motor out. And again, remember, put the hardware on there. Uh, so that you do not lose that rubber, this rubber piece here, and this, we'll put the motor wires in here, put these on, so you don't lose that. Then we'll do the second the motor. Okay. Now this time I'm going to do this a little bit different. Is I'm actually going to tape it first because I want to see if my layout comes out the same. So let me put the piece of tape first this time. Okay. So just kind of hold your wire straight. Find that spot where the heat shrink stops from the factory. Wrap the tape around. All right, there we go. We'll do it again. There we go. Now, looking at it this way, let's put our other standoff on. Let me roll this stuff aside real quick. Put our other standoff on so we can get an idea here. And it really doesn't make a difference, so that's fine. We'll take these wires here, take the first one. We know it's gonna come in like this, and we're gonna cut it right here. And I'm gonna probably use a little less tension here, so I'm going to just cut it here. 
Here's wire number one. Then I'll bring, as a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do them one at a time. I just wanna see if my measurement's doing all three the first way, which one I prefer. I think I'm actually gonna prefer this method more, um, just because it's gonna allow me to make sure that nothing's too tight or too close together. Probably a little bit more accuracy on doing the measurements, but I need to see. So let's go ahead and turn this up. Okay. Okay, there's one. Take the middle wire now. Same thing. Bring it to here. Yeah, I do. I can just tell you already, I prefer this method better. So we'll do the rest of them like this. Look at that. Okay, motor number two here, or wire number two, which is the middle wire. All right. And then the final wire, which we'll bring in, which right here. Like that. Okay, okay well, perfect, love this one. This one will be fine too, but I prefer this one. Uh, and I'll check it again just to see, but that looks pretty solid as well. All right, the next is gonna be the um, front motors. So we've done some soldering, let's make sure that our, the bench is clean. Move the excess solder, get all the stuff out of the way. The wires I will tell you to save for now. All right, there we go. Okay. Motor number two. All right, now let's get our tape. Line it up with the end of the heat shrink. Move it around. Make sure your wires are pulled straight in a nice row like that. And there you go. Perfect. Okay, now with this one, we're going to be a little different because we've got a we got a larger gap here. Um, so I, you know, a part of me is tempted to come this way, but I can't. 
So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run the tape and make sure to try to keep this wire inside. So let's do that real quick. Let's cut some tape. And the reason being is I don't want the wire to get lazy and have some slack out here where it can get caught. So let's go ahead and tape it as close as we can. And I don't know if we can get to right here, but let me see. Yeah, we should be able to actually. I'm going to remove this because I want to bring the wire straight across. So I'm going to take that out entirely. And this way I can pull the wire straight and get a good tape, keeping those wires tight and straight, just like that. All right. Perfect. Now I'll put the uh, standoff back in because I know we have to come inside the uh, inside the standoff instead of going around it. So we're going to come on the inside of it just like that. All right, and then pull it around. And for this one, I'm thinking I might even wind it up. Uh, let me see how do I want to do this because I've got an option here with the front to zip tie these wires. Okay, so I think that's what I'll do is I'll keep it like this, and then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna twist it. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do this with it so that I can get them to not spread apart. I don't want these wires spreading apart because then what I can do is I can tuck it along this inside of the arm here, and then right below that is a, zip tie, is a hole where I can zip tie the two wires together. Uh, and that may be my best option to secure these wires. So let me just do it like that. Then I would, I could zip tie those there perhaps, or at least zip tie the two motor wires together. That would work. All right, so if I do that, then I'm gonna be coming back this way. And I will cut the wires accordingly. So I will cut this one here. All right, perfect. Now that should keep the rest of them in line a little bit. Now what we'll do is flip this one over to here. Just, I don't want to tin it over the board if I can avoid it. So I'm just going to push it as far, you know, as far as I can without damaging the wire. Push it away from the board. Just about right here should work. Keeping a close eye. And you can put something over the board if you want to protect it. All right. And then I do the last wire. And I unraveled it one because I know I'm just going to wrap it back around. So I'm not worried about that. Just make sure that you do wrap it back around so the twist is tight uh, on the wire so they don't come loose. All right, now for this one, I am gonna put something over just because I don't see anything hit the board. So, 
that should protect it enough. And there we go. All right, now I did unwind it, so we're gonna wind it back through just one time, there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead, put that down in the last spot here. Perfect. Okay, have a little, just don't want to cut. See the wires over here. Perfect. All right, now we have our last motor to do. Now we'll go back to the tape. Those are two pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut both pieces now. Take the tape away. Time being. Remember, we remove that screw so we can pull uh, pull the wire as straight as possible to tape it. Now I'll put the screw back. So I've got the tape ready here. Okay. wires are pulled tight and kept straight. There we go. Perfect. Now we can put the screw back. And remember, we're going to twist these up. So let's just put the screw back first. Put the stand, put the standoff back in. Okay. Nope. All right. Now we're going to wrap these and twist these this way. Okay, and remember, we're going to basically be doing the same thing that we did here by twisting them. All right, and then what will be neat is we can, we actually, we don't even have to go through the hole that's in the bottom of the frame. We could just zip tie these two uh, uh, motor wires together, sets of motor wires together, and be just fine. All right, so I'm going to take this wire here. Use it right here, so I'm going to cut that.
Bir taraf. There we go. Perfect. Okay. I got these two that have been twisted also. So let's make sure that they're set properly. Take this wire here. Thank you for this one. And then we'll take this one and lay it right here. There we go. All right, so we've got all our wires done. Um, we can add the zip tie if we want now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna include the wire harness that's on the, because I'm not gonna zip tie this tight, guys. I'm just literally gonna make sure that these wires can't come out. So that, that's pretty much all I need right there. I don't need anything else, okay? I'm going to cut that just like that. I want there to be a little bit of play, but I just want to make sure these wires can't come out. And now we're ready to get to the uh, flight controller. Okay, so a few things that we need to make note of. Uh, the wiring harness here and the fact that we have this. And I'll open the... Uh-oh, where's my keyboard? It has... Oh, here it is. Give me a second. I'm going to log into the computer here. And I'm going to show you what's on my screen so that if you are working on this ESC, you can uh, you can see how to wire it up. Let me put all my tools away for just a second. Keep my desk somewhat from getting cluttered. Oh, and I got a mouse somewhere over here that I need to see. Where is it? It's right here. All right. So let me open up uh, so you can see the screen. Oh, my battery to my mouse is low. Wonderful. You know, you just can't win around here. It's not one thing, it's another. Let's see if this will help. Maybe this will charge for just a little bit. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna get the computer screen up here and I'm gonna show you what we're working with. Take a drink of my drink. Uh, let's do 35 amp. Okay, here's what we've got. So we've got the, uh, let's see, I believe it's gonna be the R Charlotte's, but it could be the uh, JT. I mean, they're all gonna be pretty much about the same, but what we wanna do is wanna look at the wiring diagram. So let's go, it could be the JTMCU actually. Let's go to that one real quick and see what we have here. 
Okay, so we have VBAT, current, ground, no cable, and then we have uh, one, three, two, and four. Okay, so now if you look at, if you go to the next one, let's go back here. Well, let's go to, nope, not that one. Let's go to the R Charlotte's right here. Okay. <coughs> Pretty much the wiring's <coughs> all gonna be the same. So if you look here, you're gonna have feedback, current, ground, no cable. Okay, so <coughs> one, two, three, and four doesn't really matter, either, no matter which brand you're using, because of the fact that um, uh, it's, it's a non-used cable. It has no purpose in the system and we're gonna be rerouting the motor wires anyway. So seeing that that's the case, uh, I'm gonna make a little change here now because um, my common sense brain forgot about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut the um, zip tie we just put on here because I'm going to actually remove the harness and take out that no cable wire. The reason I'm doing that is because if it says no cable and I see a cable, I always worry about what that could do, what that cable could do if it's connected to my equipment. So one, two, three, four, we're gonna lift up this tab right here and we're gonna pull out the yellow cable. As far as the motor mapping for the rest of them, I don't care. Since I have to resource, do the resource mapping anyway, it makes no difference to me. I just wanna get rid of this extra cable and there we go. All right, now that that's done, let me see how this plugs in. Man, I cannot remember if it goes this way or that way. And I cannot see the pins anymore. Isn't that lucky me? I would assume it goes like this, but gosh darn it, I could be completely wrong. Well, let's see. It's not like we can't fix it. Let me just not use a sharp tip. Let's go something like this. Because I can move these wires out of the way temporarily. This back in. No, perfect. All right, let's lay that back down. Now I'll go ahead and zip tie again. And you don't have to remove that cable. I do it. You could just uh, cut it. You could just remove it from one end and then heat shrink the end of it so it doesn't touch anything. Whatever is your preference. It's not a big deal. Just. I just have a preference not to leave anything. If there's no cable, then there should be no cable. That's my thing, so I don't wanna see it there. All right, let's get that zip tie, let's get rid of that wire. All right, so, uh, now, um, not sure what we're gonna do on the current sensor. I believe that this board does have that on the flip side, but I'm gonna to have to check. Um, so we may not end up using that at all anyway, uh, but I'll check into this board just to make sure. However, what we are going to be using is we're going to be using some of the wire harnesses on here, but the hardest thing to do here, or the most tedious, not the hardest, it's not hard by any means, but it's just tedious, is to, um, I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a rubber, uh, rubber O-ring on each of these, because I need about a millimeter to feel comfortable being away from, uh, oh, I got to take these off too, don't I? I have O-rings on here, I forgot. So let me remove these real quick. All right. I'll put one of them here. stuff down you start forgetting when you put it oh here it is it rolled away all right let's put this one on here and stop it from falling out there we go move the motor wires out tighten it down and the motor wires can go back to where they belong there we go okay so the board's gonna sit like this okay uh, and that is 
The front of the quad is this way, so, and the arrow on the board is right here, so it's pointing towards the front. So I'm gonna put it just like that, all right? And that clears everything that we need pretty much. Now, let's look at the board and the wire harnesses here so you can plan the layout of how you wanna do this, okay? Looking at the board, the way it sits here, you have ESC4, ESC2, ESC1, ESC3. There's your signal pads, uh, which are very small little circles right here, 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 and here. Uh, you also have, uh, let me see, if you go to the opposite side over here, you have a wire harness and here's where you have your receiver that we're going to plug in. If you go to the front, you have your camera signal that's going right here, plus your RX and your LEDs if you're using them. Uh, your back plug is going to have your buzzer uh, and your TX and RX and then uh, so forth, okay? So uh, TX3, RX3, and so forth. Um, what we're gonna be using is we are going to be, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these on here now, just so we can hold them in place. We are going to be using the wire harnesses for the receiver and for the camera only. So I'll show you how we're gonna do that. It's very simple. Okay, and this is pretty much how the build will look. And it, it's, it's a pretty solid build there, just like this. Uh, everything sits nicely. Um, and so we should have no problem here getting everything set. So let's go ahead and look at the wire harnesses now, get an idea of what we're working with, okay? So on the front, because don't forget, we have to cut this and make this attach as well. So we're gonna be dealing with that last. So let's look at our wire harnesses and let's look at our diagram, okay? So we'll turn the quad to match this here. All right, and well, actually, we're looking at the wire harnesses here, so this would have to be flipped over. Um, so we know that on this side right here is going to be our uh, signal, which is the smallest plug. This is the smallest plug, which goes right here. And looking at this plug, we've got the following. Uh, we've got our S bus our PPM, our five volt, and our ground, okay? Uh, we've got our 3.3 and our DSMX right here. So if you look at the way this wire harness sits, okay, and I'll just show you if it was to sit, it would sit like this, and then it would be turned over, okay? So we have DSMX, we have 3.3, then we have a ground, five volt, PPM, and S bus. So what we wanna do is we need to keep let me put this card here for you. We need to keep S bus, 5 volt, and ground. So this wire, which is white, the red, and the black. And we're going to spin all those up together. Okay, just like this. And then let's remove the plug. And we're going to remove the rest of the wires. Let's do that. We're going to do the same thing we just did, like with the ESC. We're going to lift the tabs, and we're going to take them out. Okay, so we're going to take out wire number two. So this yellow tab right here, this yellow wire, we're gonna lift the tab up. Uh, I may use my exacto knife for this. So let me do that. Okay, so we're gonna lift up tab number two here to remove the yellow. So just lift it up gently and then pull the yellow out, just like that, and then push the tab back down, okay? Then we're gonna remove the last two over here, which is gonna be this maroon, burnt, orange color, and we're gonna remove the blue, which are the last two tabs, so lift those up gently. Take both wires. Pull them out, just like that. Lay them aside if you want to save them, and then push the tabs back down, and you're done. You've now pulled what you need. So I'm just gonna wind these out now, okay? Just like that. And I'm gonna cut the ends off because we're not using those kind of connection, all right? We will put this right here. That is where we plug our receiver. We will wire this to our receiver, okay? The next thing is going to be our camera, which is coming out of the front, okay? So if you look at the front, right, uh, this is going to be sitting like this, so to speak, okay? And so what we have is we have our front here, and we're looking for the wire harness here, 
that is going to fit the wire diagram. So we have uh, that we see right here. Okay, so it's going to have a LED, a five volt, and a ground. Uh, let's see, that's got our RXTX, and then let's look at our other wire harness, which is right here. Turn them both upside down. Okay, the other one here is positive and ground. So this harness that has a red and a black on the end, that's going to go with the positive and ground harness, which is our buzzer. So we're going to put that one away. So if your harness, if you're, do, if you're doing this and you have the harness, find the one that has the red and the black. See where you have your tabs? Turn the tabs over. And if the two first wires are red and black, that's going to be for your buzzer. And that's not what we're using. So you can save that for another day if you want to use them. So this is the harness we're going to be using. And from this harness, we are going to save our 5 volt and our ground, which is always going to be our red and our black. We are not going to be using our LED. And we're not going to be using, and we will be using our camera. So we can use the three middle if we want, which is also camera, 5 volt and ground. And what we'll do is we'll take out the blue and the yellow. And we're going to take out the outside three wires. Okay, so you're going to end up with white, red, and black which are the center wires of this particular harness here. So let's go ahead and remove the other five wires altogether. So we're gonna lift the tab up. There's one tab, take out the blue. Lift up the second tab, take out the yellow, push those tabs back down, come over to the outside here, lift up the first one, take it out, push it back down, lift up the second one, take it out, push that back down, and then lift up the third one. There you go. Just like that. That's all you got to do. Simple. That's simple. And you are left with a harness that has, just like that, a white, a red, and a black. And that plugs into the front here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that. We're going to plug it in right. Uh, right here. Let me do that. There we go. Okay. That's going to be for your camera. Now, now it's time to work on the rest of this setup, all right? So we've got, our harness, we've got our harnesses done. We're not connecting anything else right now, so I'm gonna put all this back in. Okay. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're now gonna look for our uh, wire, wires to get our quad power, okay? And so we have a couple options here. So first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to wind up these wires as well because these are going to be for the camera. Just like I wound up those wires. And now we need to work with these wires here. So we have our current sensor, which again, I'm not sure if we're going to have a current sensor on here. So I may have wanted to remove it. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wind that wire down and, and heat shrink it for now. I don't believe we have a current sensor on here, but I'm going to check again anyway. All right, but we are going to do the following here. So let's go ahead and take um, our red wire here, which is going to be our, uh, this is our VBAT. So we're going to take our VBAT here and we're going to cut it. Okay, just like that. And our VBAT is going to go to one of these pads right here. Okay, so the pads on this side are positive and the pads on this side are ground. So let's go ahead and tin that up. So I'm going to go ahead and prep these pads. Matter of fact, I'm going to prep all of these just in case. Okay. There we go, just like that. All right. I'm going to tin this wire real quick. There we go. And I'm going to also tin the pad that it's going to. Okay. So I'm going to tin this center pad right here for the positive VBAT. And I'm going to tin this one for the ground. Mm 
Okay. All right, put the positive in, it's good to go. I will make sure to keep my camera wires away from getting tangled with it. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the ground wire. So we'll just go in order here. Well, because we have the current wire, and again, I don't know if we're gonna use it. I didn't remove it yet, but I am gonna cut it. So that's your white wire. Just kind of lay that down for the time being. Let's go ahead and go to our ground wire, and we're gonna do the same thing. Let's go ahead and strip it and tin it. Just like that. Trying to use all my tiny solder strands here. Hold on. There we go. And that's a little too much wire there, so I'm just going to cut a little bit of that off. I don't want excess wire there. There we go. Okay, and then let's get that one soldered down to the other pad. Right here. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. All right. The last remaining wires here are kind of up in the air for you to do with what you please. And the reason that I'm saying that is because you can try to stick with the diagram of which wire goes to which motor. But the fact of the matter is at the end of the day, we're gonna be doing resource mapping anyway. So just, I would personally, I would just take them all and cut them right here and just say, screw it, I don't care, uh, because I'm gonna to have to remap them anyway. So take your two longest ones that you have available and you want to don't get them tangled with anything just make sure they're loose here and you're going to be going uh let's see make sure you don't pull the white wire by the way that is for that was with the positive and ground so make sure that one is set aside that's going to be the wire that's closest to the red there so let me go ahead that's this one here let me go ahead and get move that over we want to deal with the four wires that are together here okay i'm going to take my uh, brown wire and i'm going to run it to uh, pad three. So I'm going to go ahead and, and you could run whichever one you want. Like I said, we're going to be, but if you want to follow how I'm doing it, uh, so that the programming is the same, then do that. Take your wrap. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah. Take the brown wire, send it to pad three or this orangish brown wire, whatever that is. Okay. Here we go. So let's tin that up. And these pads are tiny, so just do your best to get that solder on there properly. It doesn't take much solder for these things, all right? Here we go, and we're gonna put that pad, and we're gonna run on this side of the board, and we're gonna tack that down just like that. Perfect, okay? Now, <clears throat> remember, keep that one white wire away that was the one that was with the red wire. That's your current sensor. Keep that one away. Let me see what else is long. I mean, I could take the white wire here and I'll go to the signal pad one. So let me strip that. There we go. Let's tin it. Twist that up. There we go, and I'm going to tin signal one here real quickly. There we go. And then I'm gonna bring the wire in. And I'm gonna tack that down right there. Perfect. Okay, now that that's done, the only two we have left is gonna be blue and green and normally I would say cut these I'm just not going to cut them I'm going to leave them they're so small they're so insignificant in terms of weight uh, that I don't care I just want to be able to if I ever want to have the wire used again or, or give the option to do something else with it so I'm going to take the blue wire and we're going to go to uh, signal pad 2 which is over here in the top let me twist that up
There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the solder drop right here on signal pad two. There we go. Tack that down just like that. Now you see I've got the red and the blue here ready to go. I'll have the black and the green ready to go. And we can just kind of tuck them all nicely together. I don't see any reason to shorten them. Uh, they're not going to get in the way of the camera, I promise you, so don't worry. Uh, the camera wires, that is, and the camera mounting and the camera movement. It will not get in the way, so you'll be just fine. So let's do that. Okay, let's tin up the green wire. All right. And now what we're going to do is let's put a drop on the S4 pad. Let's get that tinned up and ready. There we go. Let's drop this wire and tack it down right there. Perfect. That is done. So we still have this white wire. And the funniest thing about it is it's going to be the wire that helps actually weave all these together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this white wire and I'm going to run it through these loops of red, green. I'm going to run it through all of them. I'm going to do it a couple of times just to kind of like I'm sewing. And this is actually going to be a great way to hold these together. Okay, so I'm just going to, you, know, you don't have to do this, but now you try to make do with everything that you have and utilize it without having to add a bunch of other stuff. So I know that if I bring this white wire around a few times, I can pull these other wires together, keep them organized and looking clean, and I will be done with it. All right? Okay. Now, there. That's what I'm talking about. See? It'll just keep all the wires nice together. Now, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to cap this off. So I'm going to put like a little, I'm going to bring it to about right here, and then I'll fold the white wire over just a tad towards like done a U. And I'll take a small piece of heat shrink and just heat shrink that so that it keeps it from being exposed. Something like this. See how I viewed it over just like that, just as the loop. And I'm going to put this right over that to cap it. And I'll bring my iron, or I'll bring my heat gun. Uh, what happened? I think that's dead. Oh no! Oh, there it goes. I'm just gonna shrink that around so it stays on the water. Just like that, and then I'll just fold this over. Perfect, that's all I need. Okay, now that wire is protected. Everything is protected. Folds nicely. We're golden. You can put those now, you can tuck them wherever you want. Doesn't matter, it's looking good. Everything's clean, no problems, okay? However you want to do that, you do it. It's not going to be a problem. As long as everything sits nice and clean, you're golden. All right, and that's what we're left with right there. A nice, uh, very clean install. All right, so the next thing we have is going to be our camera. Let's do that. Let's do that. Well, you know what? One more thing we need. I better write Sam because I do not see a receiver. Let's see what she says. Okay, so while we're doing that, let's get the camera out. Here's our camera. Clean up everything else. Okay. And let's see. So our camera is 5 volt ground video and OSD. And so we're gonna use these three wires accordingly. Now we may splice into theirs, which is fine. So we have, put this away. Right, 
and this is their wiring here, which would go like this. Okay? Now, one thing I want to check, and I guess this would have been cool to check earlier, as you say. Oh. Wait, you know what? I think it is here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. Okay. Uh, she just reminded me that I'm going to have to pull this back out because he got a Crossfire Nano. And I need more than just the S Plus then. So here's what we're going to do. Um, so let's look at this real quickly uh, and we'll redo that. But let me look at something else first. So let's give it. Uh, let me see. Okay, so I was wondering, and this is kind of a neat little thing. I don't know if that's gonna work, but I wanna check something out real quick. I wanna remove this anyway, because I have to. I wonder, and I know this doesn't go in here, guys. I'm just looking to see if it fits. Does this fit their cable? Is this the right size? You know what, it is. That'd be really cool. All right. I was just thinking if we could plug this in, but I don't want to because I think it's going to spread the other wires too wide. So what we're going to do here is we're going to end up splicing this into this. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And to do that, we're going to cut this wire very short. Okay, to about right there. So let's untwist that. Cut this wire short as well. We're going to do a little splicing. So we're going to have to strip both sides. That's one. Two. Three. Let's do the same thing here. One. Two. And three. on this side as well. Okay, there we go. Spin that up. One, two, and three. Now, we're going to need some heat shrink for this. And I think this is going to be the smallest heat shrink that I have actually. So we'll just check and verify that. Uh, yeah, that looks about the same size. Yep, that's it. All right, this will be the heat shrink that we use for all three wires. So let's go ahead and cut some heat shrink out real quick. So we'll cut one, and then we'll cut two, and then we'll cut the third one. All right, cut a little bit more off of that. There we go. All right, so now what we're gonna do is let's tin the wires real quick so we can hang these over here. We'll tin these up. Okay, tin this up, and tin this up. Okay, and then we will slide our first heat shrink over, and we'll start with black, so I'm going to tin the black one up here. You know what, just to hold it in place, I think I'll just put it in the camera and not normally do this, but it seems like a pretty easy option. I'm just going to tin all three of these while they're sitting in the camera like that. One. and three. Okay. And now we will, I may use my, let me see, do I have it here? Uh, I'll use this helping hands here just because I don't want the wire moving very much or at all for that matter. So let me just have this helping hands here. 
pull this wire. Okay, and I will bring this wire. I don't need the camera anymore. Put this wire in. And there's one. All right, the next one will be the red. Let's do that. that one seam right there. Let's get the third heat shrink here. Slide that over the white. And we'll do the yellow to white last. We don't have to move the healthy hands. It looks like it's holding that just fine. So let's see if we can just get this. Perfect. All three are now done. Now what we'll do is we'll line up the heat shrink where they belong. Two, three. Make sure, make sure they're sitting where they belong. Perfect, like that. twist them while they're hot and they will literally just melt to each other and hold in place. Okay, just like that. Perfect. And that's done. Okay, so now our camera wiring is done. Our ESC wiring is done. And now the only thing I have to do is I have to go back now. There's our camera. It's going to be great because this quad comes, they give you the printed uh, stands right here. Printed mounts, I mean, for your camera. Okay. So this one will go here. Move that wire up just a little bit. This one over here. We'll move this wire up just a little bit. camera will actually go just like that. Perfect fit. Now we'll get the screws from the camera here. See, everything is clean and out of the way. Nothing to worry about there. Uh, let's see what I want to do now. So the only thing is, is that yes, this is supposed to be a TBS crossfire and I forgot, I thought it was going to be a free sky receiver. So on that plug, and I just took it out. Let me find it here. Uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to skip using the um, S bus plug here and we're actually going to go ahead and come on over and use the rear mounted plug uh, right back here and this is the one I showed you earlier because this way we're going to give the TBS well assigned to the UR and I won't actually use any of the TBS wires I'm going to actually use this entire thing to set theirs up now to do that 
Uh, we do have a buzzer wire here, so because I'm going to use this, I'm going to go ahead and put the buzzer on for the gentleman so that he can have that. So I'm going to wind these up because we're going to keep that right there. Okay, so let me do that. There we go. And then we're going to use TX3. I guess we can use that one. Um, Yeah, we'll use TX3 and RX3, so we're going to stay with the two buzzers uh, and then the next two wires right here. Uh, but we don't have... Oh, you know what? We've got 5-volt ground right here, right here on the board, so we'll use that for his. Um, so what we can do now is we can pull out the rest of these, and we're going to use the back instead of using the side. So we're going to remove the side altogether, and we're going to remove all these from the back. So let's get my exacto knife. That should be it. Those are the four wires that we need out. Yep. Put those tabs back down. Okay. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Like so. So we'll have our our TX will be blue. And let me get his TBS real quickly. Actually, we'll end up using the power on the ground from the TBS wire set. Okay. Okay. So what we'll do here is we're going to tin this portion right here. And we got a 5 volt on the ground. So let's just tin that up. That's the 5 volt. And that's the ground. And we will take the TBS existing wires here. Let's go ahead and just put those down for now. Take the 5 volt here. Okay, and we'll take the ground here. Perfect. All right. Okay. TX and RX. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the receiver ready. I'm just going to put this right on here. I don't care where that goes. But what I do care about is making sure that we have our wires done properly. So let's tin up the receiver. this receiver and where we're going to put it we have plenty of room the main thing is to see where we want to put the antenna right because we could put the antenna on the front we have room there to send it under to send this underneath okay so we can put the antenna on the front and then put it over here or we can run the antenna on the back with the assumption that this is going to be a bottom mount battery. If we don't want to assume that, we could put it here, but I hate to keep putting pressure. So let me see what option I may have. Just a bottom mount battery. No, that's not going to work. So if I put it underneath, 
then it gets in the way and if I put it on top and then the zip top is down Hmm. Alright, where's my top plate? I think if I was to put it here for now and maybe design something for the 3D, but at least put it here to hold it. I think that might work. Let me see how that comes out. Oh, and it's basically gonna be to hold it in place until I put something together on a 3D print, perhaps. Because if I did that, then I could, I could bring this down and bring this down, and it would definitely be out of the props. No, I don't like that. Offset it. I think that would work better. All right, so we're going to offset it just a tad to avoid the. Uh, so let me do that real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie just to hold it in place. side. And then I'll do one more. Beautiful. All right, so we've got our TBS ready to go. hands back here.
All right, now that we've tinned these up, we'll trim them just a little bit to make sure that they're not too long. And we'll go ahead and solder, heat shrink, and the receiver will be done. Okay, so let's bring that around. Perfect. There you are. Now, Okay. All right, so outside of the buzzer, which we're going to do here momentarily, which I need to just figure out where I want to put it because there is no buzzer stand or buzzer mount. So let me just see where I think would be a good spot. Let me just get this wire back through here real quickly. All right, so here's our buzzer wire. And let me look at the top plate again. All right, so all we need to do now is just find a spot for the buzzer wire. And then the rest of this is gonna stay very well tucked away. And I'll show you exactly how. So we're gonna take this just like this. And I'm gonna zip tie that little piece together. So hang tight, let me get a zip tie. And away we go. Okay, let's sit nicely. Okay, all right, so as far as the buzzer goes, um, let's see, HGLSC does give us a buzzer, it's right here. And they don't really give us a place, I mean, there's not really a way to mount this buzzer. Uh, so I'm going to just try to find a spot that would make sense. Um, given all that we're working with, plus we need to put the antenna in, which is an MMCX antenna. So let's just see if we put the buzzer. Hmm. You put it like right here, perhaps. It's going to be hot glued most likely there's no other place to really put it so let me cut this wire all right let's tin the wire up <coughs> get our glue gun on because it's going to be no matter what we do it's going to be hot glued so let's tin this up Oh, and let's, I'm going to do that here too, because I want this to really get a good grip. Okay, and we're going to use our yellow, small heat shrink uh, again. Let me grab another one. There we go. And we'll cut this about 
for this length. Okay, put that over here. And we can start getting rid of all this other stuff. There we go. Okay, so let's, I think I already did this, but I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Twist it, twist it here. All right, now we gotta leave enough room for the heat shrink. Matter of fact, I may untwist this just a little bit because that heat shrink's gonna get very close and then I can twist it back up. Let's put this down here. All right, I'm gonna bring my helping hands back in to help me out. And what I think I'm gonna do, is I'll set it like this, okay? Knowing the long strand here, the longer wire is the positive, that's this one here. So let me just try to put a little bit of solder on there. Okay, and put a little bit on the ground. There you go, all right. Let's now kind of put this at an angle. Perfect. And let's try to do the same thing with this one. Now we can bring both of these down right to where they belong, right there. Bring our heat gun that will hopefully start up one more time for me. There it goes. And let's get these wires. I don't think my heat shrink's producing any heat from my heater. Come on. go. Perfect. Ah, when it works, it's so nice. Okay. Perfect. All right. That's good. Twist it up here. Okay. And what I'm thinking, again, is that I may just place this right here between the standoff. So let me just see if I can do that. Right. If I can do that safely without any problems, we will be golden. So I am going to first peel that sticker off. And I'm going to put this right here. I think that's going to hold perfect. Let me let it cool off though and dry before I start messing too much with this. All right. So, and I may hit just a little bit more right back here so it sticks with the standoff even more. There we go. Then I'll, I'll remove any excess as needed. I just want to make sure that I give enough of it so that it can at least stick properly. Get all these little glue strings out of here. Okay. Okay, okay. There we go, there we go. Now we can start cleaning up our desk because pretty much all the wiring portion is now done. All right, so let's see what we're left with. Put all our tools away, well, most of them. Okay. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out well. All right, now I still know we have to put an antenna, which I'm gonna put a different antenna than 
I put a little bit of an upgrade one in there. Um, but as far as everything else goes, now I can, and I'm gonna leave this up to the up to the pilot. I can either zip tie this here, but I want him to bind it first. Or you could just kind of leave it loose right here all day long, especially if he's gonna go to a uh, bottom mount battery. But it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna put the top on for now so I can see what we're looking at. Okay, with regards to our wiring, make sure everything is good and clean. I'm going to most likely, and I think this will probably be a great idea here, is I'm going to just take a bigger uh, piece like this and perhaps, yeah, I'm gonna cut a portion of that, put it over here, which will basically be used to bring all these wires nicely together in a bind. Just like that. Perfect. Okay. Beautiful. All right. I'll put all this together now. All right, now I have to clean up the bench, but I'm gonna tell you right now, as far as the quad goes, this is great. This sucker came out great, very clean. The wires are hidden nicely. Everything's underneath tucked in. The antenna came out well. Uh, buzzer's gonna be good right where it is. Uh, everything looks very good for this quad. I mean, it's a very, it's a very good body weight, very light quad. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, actually, before I end this part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure we test our continuity. Okay, want to make sure. Okay, that's good, which means that's good. And let's see, let's test our uh, 5 volt ground. Here's our ground. It's not touching, and here's our 5 volt. And we have a very good and secure 5 volt ground. If we touch it together, perfect. All right, so it looks like I should be able to basically plug this in real quick. And now I want to clean up my desk before I do any more work, get all these small little metal, metal shavings and things off. But uh, for right now, one quick look over, I should be able to plug this in and hear it start up. That's what I wanted to hear, guys. We are ready to go. We are now gonna to get to the beta flight and BL heli portion of this build. But this sucker is beautiful. As a matter of fact, hold on, there's still a couple things I can do, right? Uh, and I've never understood how they came up with this here because they did a <laughs> real wacky job of measuring this, I guess. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it so that it fits. And so what we do is we're gonna cut it here and here. Okay, now what that does is that allows us to put one half, one portion right in the middle. Uh, I need to cut just a little bit more off, so we just, there we go. It's not gonna be the straightest cut, but it will serve its purpose. One right there. And then the way they did this, it's like I have to cut this off here, which is fine, I mean, it, it gives me plenty. Of adhesive or maybe I'll put that up, up here yep there we go and then I have this one here which is supposed to go around those which doesn't so let's I'll just cut this off right here and let's see how close we are it can either go this way or it can go this way and I think I'm gonna put it this way to get it to fit better. There we go. Yep. And so there we go. So we have our lipo stuff right here. We have our 
TransTech TB5. Uh, Velcro strap right here. And there we go. There is the build. Now, again, I will put the antenna. We're going to get all that situated. I want to get the right one for it. Um, and we'll be good to go. So there you go, guys. Uh, so we'll be back to programming in just a second. Hope you like it. See you in just a little bit.